Hey, my name is Jenny Cole. I want to share with you my two near-death experiences, one at age 5 due to head injury, one at age 46 due to anaphylactic allergic reaction. First time. I was about 5 when my first NDE happened. Of course, back in 1953, it wasn't known. I recall watching the new family on the block move in and saw they had a boy about my age that I wanted to meet. Mom said no. He was having emotional problems, and his mother warned everyone to stay away. I felt badly for him, so I decided to go meet him anyway, and was confident he would see how nice I am and like me. I walked up the stone steps in front of his house and knocked on his door. When he answered, he screamed, Go away! In a furious rage, he proceeded to push me as hard as he could backwards down those stone steps. I flew through the air and tumbled over and over down the steps, and didn't understand why the steps kept jumping up to hit me in the head. With each hit, I popped out of my body onto the terraced lawn at my house, looking at what was happening but detached. In and out I popped, in the end staying on the lawn. I could see a woman was rushing out the door two houses down, and I heard her screen door slam shut. There was such a nice little breeze blowing, and it was very peaceful. I hadn't realized how high I had gotten, but I chanced to look down and saw a little girl in a brown dress crumpled on the ground far below and wondered who she was. The lady kneeled by her and I thought, oh, she will be okay, the lady will help. It was then that I saw the silvery white cord connecting me to the girl and realized it was me down there. I felt like a kite and was very happy where I was. I flew that way until I felt warmth behind me and turned. It was the most beautiful sun I had ever seen. Golden yellow, with rays. All hues of the rainbow emanating out a long way. Very surreal. It seemed to come closer, but maybe I was going higher. The colors surrounded me. I stretched out to touch the sun. It was very bright, but I could look straight into it. The second I touched it, I was back in my body. The woman was cradling me and saying I would be okay. She said she was a nurse who had seen my fall from her house and rushed out the screen door to help. She said it was a very bad fall and that I had stopped breathing. She'd had to perform artificial respiration on me. She talked a mile a minute and seemed very upset. She carried me home, admonishing Mom to take me to the hospital immediately. Mom called the doctor to come for a home visit. I told Mom of my flight before he came, although he was there within minutes. He checked me out, stating I had a severe concussion, wrote out some medicine for me, and said that I wasn't to get out of bed for three weeks. Mom was very upset about the fall, but was keenly interested in my time being a kite, then related her own NDE, totally different but with some of the same elements, when she was a teen and had typhoid pneumonia. She wanted to know what was on the other side of the sun. She seemed disappointed that I couldn't tell her, so I decided that night to relive it in dreams. The following occurred in the three weeks after my fall. I tried every night, until one night, I don't know how long, I had another flight to the beautiful sun, just as real as the first time, but this time I went through it. On the other side, the colors were very bright. I was on a garden path with many trees and beautifully colorful flowers waving in the breeze. A butterfly flew across my path and lit on the flowers. I heard birds chirping and a bunny hopped across. I wandered happily along, loving each new sight, until I saw an old man in a pure white long robe. He had long, white, wavy, almost ringlets, hair and long beard, walking towards me. I gasped and wondered how my father got there before me. Not my daddy, but my father. I was filled with such joy and love. I ran to meet him. We talked for a while. I was emotional, and he was pure love and kindness. Sometime during the talk, I grew into a young woman. I don't remember what was said or how long it took, but suddenly I began to shrink back to five sobbing uncontrollably on my knees with hands covering my face, then wrapping my arms around his legs and robe, holding on tight and begging to stay, tears streaming down my face. My father said, Not yet. You have work to do. He then bent down and said, Remember to be nice to people. I asked, And animals too? He gently said, Yes, and animals too. But especially be nice to people. Suddenly I returned to myself, gasping for air and with a big headache. Perhaps I shouldn't, but I consider these flights to be one NDE, not two. It was absolutely real and not dreamlike. I have never doubted it. For years afterwards, I was able to tell when a relative died before my family knew of it. I used to have a death dream, in which I knew a family member had departed. I was never wrong. When I was 22, I had this dream, which happened three days before my uncle's death. 
After he died, I felt that my knowing and saying something might have actually caused him to give up. This did not feel like a gift. It was full of death and sadness. I prayed to have it taken away, and the intensity of them more or less left me. I wasn't afraid to die, but to feel responsible for someone else's death was more than I could bear. After that, I rarely spoke of this knowledge when I became aware. This NDE has changed me profoundly and totally. My life is ever evolving because be nice to people has so many facets and possibilities. Second NDE. After losing my parents so close together, I was beyond inconsolable. I felt like an orphan. I have never believed in suicide. It is so preventable and not part of the plan I had been given. I had known that I didn't have a choice in this matter from my first NDE. The entire extended family was devastated with so many leaving this earth within such a short period. It was a really bad summer. Ties had been severed between us as we each dealt with the losses separately. I found solace in knowing I would see my parents again in that beautiful realm, all in proper time. I had taken some time off work, and a couple of years later, when I was 46, I was preparing to return, but decided to play and explore a little more before getting back to the grind. The last trip was to the ocean, where I picked up some fresh oysters, fully intending to savor every bite. When I returned, I made a jambalaya and ate nearly the whole thing. As I finished the last bite, I had an odd feeling and ran to the bathroom. I fell over shortly after getting there and could not move. I kept trying to get up to call for help, but was too weak. I couldn't lift my head off the ground because I kept passing out when I tried. I was very ill, and my attempts to be heard by others outside my apartment failed. After a few minutes, I tried to get to the phone in the other room. I failed in every attempt. I knew I would die if I didn't make it. I tried one more time and finally made it. They called 911, and before long the medics arrived. They hooked me up to machines and took my blood pressure. The medics stated they were going to lift me to a sitting position to see what happened. I told them not to, that my blood pressure couldn't support me if they did that. They did it anyway, and said, Don't worry. We have you and won't let anything happen. As predicted, I passed out with my head bent forward, which cut off my oxygen. I felt myself surrender, and it was okay. All of a sudden, I was sitting in what I perceived to be my front room, confused and totally surrounded by the blackest black, perfect black, and totally relaxed. In front of me I saw my TV, but the shape was different. It was a perfect rectangle, it was perfect geometrically, and the white on the screen did not cross into the blackness. Inside was what appeared to be a toga party, five or six couples enjoying each other's company and chatting happily. I decided I must have woken myself up in the middle of the night and ended up in the front room turning on the TV. I watched this party for a while and decided it must be a B movie and expected Clash of the Titans or some such movie, with giants and odd creatures bursting around the corner of the hallway at the end of the room. I was darned if I was going to spend my time watching it. I reached down for the remote to change the channel, but to my surprise there was no remote or couch there. In fact there was nothing there. I felt completely intact, arms, legs, and torso. I was thinking very clearly, crystalline clarity. My laser-sharp vision was perfect and unfiltered by weak eyes and faulty brain connections. I was determined to change the channel. I decided to get up and change it directly on my TV set. The moment I thought that, I sped to the set without trying to move. There was a rush of wind and a sensation of incredible speed. When I got there, the TV was life-sized, the room brilliant, and I was peering in on the party. I knew at that instant, I was dead. I was totally giddy with anticipation that I would see my parents shortly. The room was made of the most beautiful luminescent white marble. Marble floors, walls, ceiling, and columns. They were perfect geometrically. The light emanating from them was totally contained within each laser-sharp line of each feature. It did not cross into the next line or feature, diminishing its glory in any way. To the left against the wall was a white marble table with a punch bowl containing the oddest, mystical-colored liquid I have ever seen, with several stemmed glasses of an odd, geometrical shape. In the left corner in front of me was a large green parlor palm. Each person was holding a glass of the liquid. They were wearing clothing made of the same white luminescent quality as the entire room. These people were beautiful and young. I knew them, but not their names. I was convinced if I could make it to the end of the room and down the hall, it would lead to the realm. 
and I could search for my parents. My mind was racing, thoughts all mixed together at once, thinking, how does one walk on that gorgeous floor without marring it? Would it hold my weight? What was in the marble that made it so luminescent? Could I reach the end of the room without being noticed? Was the palm big enough to hide me? And what are their names? I know them, but they are younger versions. What is that punch made of? How did it get so colorful and perfectly clear at the same time? It was glowing outrageously. I was certain I wasn't putting any of that in my system. How can you drink out of that glass without spilling all over yourself? I stepped up to the floor. It held me and I didn't slip. And hid behind the palm. Watching. Again thinking. What if this was a sound stage I didn't want to interrupt? Were my parents here as well? I began to search their faces. As soon as I did that, everyone turned and came over to me, welcoming me by name in a most gracious manner. They seemed to be filled with genuine joy to see me, so much for sneaking to the back hallway, so much for avoiding the embarrassment of not remembering their names. I was offered a glass of their liquid punch. I graciously declined, but they were insistent. Their mouths moved and I heard sound when they talked. I knew that every thought I had was heard. I tried twice to make it to the back of the room, but smiling they offered me a drink again. When I declined, they encircled me. Women on the inside and men on the outer ring. And you guessed it, in two perfect circles. I knew it was useless to decline, so I agreed to try a sip of the drink without earthly comparison or name. One, which I have come to think of as nuclear. I raised the glass slowly, my wonderful hosts gently encouraging me all the while. As soon as that glass touched my lips, I was returned to my body. The paramedic was holding me and just laying me back down. My hand and arm made motions of still trying to lift the glass. I asked how long he held me upright. He said, Two seconds. I asked, Are you sure? He said, Yes. The timeline is inconceivable, but I had no sense of time while I was there. When I reached the emergency room, the doctors worked feverishly on me. They said my body temperature was very low and dropping, my blood pressure almost non-existent. After several hours, I asked the nurse what I had. She said, I don't know, but it almost took you with it. After a night in the coronary care unit, the doctor finally had a diagnosis. It had been anaphylactic shock from the shellfish. I couldn't ever have any again. I moped around for a month, convinced that I was losing ground spiritually the longer I lived. After all, my first experience was of the round sun and brilliant colors. Love, 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 peace, happiness, light. My father in long white robes had received my life's plan. Now I had been to a toga party with people I didn't know in knee length togas. My parents had not come to greet me. There was no message to take back. I had now been kicked out of the realm twice or had arrived too early. I had to keep hydrated after the illness. So I went shopping for groceries and was so excited to find a new sports drink. The color was totally new and luminescent, at least part of the quality of nuclear. I bought as many as I could carry believing this to be proof of my trip. I called the 800 number on the back of the bottle and spoke to a nice gal who confirmed this was a totally new color flavor. They had opened a test market in our area without advertising it just that day. It was a surprise. The luminescence was from the phosphorus in the drink. I shared my story with her, making her promise not to withdraw the drink, because it was the drink of life. She kept her promise along with the help of thousands of customers, because the flavor is still around today. 18 years later. So at least I had a little message. Stay hydrated. Oh, and everything is perfect there. Besides the sports drink, I always keep a living palm in the house. Having had the privilege of two NDEs so far apart in life, I've gained a little perspective on the experience. First of all, no matter what the content of the NDE, it is a real occurrence and not a dream. They are always there helping us. We are not alone. There is hope. Every NDE is specific in its content, and totally different from another's NDE. We seem to get what we need at the time in a way that we can understand at that point in our life, and perhaps get enough to last a lifetime. We should never blame those already passed for not staying on earth for us. Instead, we should have jubilation in their new circumstances. We should respect all life, including our own, not imposing our will on others, nor interact in a way that hampers or crowds their energy and life experience like the brilliant marble was perfectly separated. I know there will be more that I can glean from these experiences, but that book is yet to be written. Please forgive the lengthy accounts. I flunked concise in English class, 
and don't seem to be able to contain my life in the little boxes provided. For me, this was concise. I did, however, get A's in run on sentences. Peace, love, and light to all who made it through these accounts. Watch this near-death experience next about a woman who met her future son, 